Welcome to Prompt Joust Halloween Special. <laughs> I'm Marcus V. Calvert. Weston Kincaid. Horror and mystery author. Yeah, I write sci-fi. Welcome to Cleveland's Dirty Little Secret. Think of this as a show where two tales enter and one tale leaves. Now, there are rules to this fair encounter. You can find them on Facebook. Story Medics is the name of the page. They're written out and they're neat and tidy. But I think you need to see it as it's played out. Don't worry, it's not that complicated. Now, we did the coin toss because it's really dark in here and you won again. I'm just lucky like that. Who goes first? You do. Fingers. All right, prompt master. Where? Not just where's the prompt, where's the prompt master? Did you feed him this morning? Um, define feed. Oh. Where's your phone? You're not calling me. Prompt master, where are you? Really? He's at the vet. Again? Rabies? <sighs> you know we're filming today. Yes. Yes. He sent an understudy. Uh, Leo? Leo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice name. So, Leo... Where oh, is right. the prop? Oh, there. Okay. Huh? Well, <sighs> hiding in plain sight. Let's get to it, shall we? The prompt appears to be. Hmm. Hmm. A fork. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. I limped out of the kitchen with a fork in hand. Behind me, Leopold was clutching what was left of his windpipe. I have to say, this was going to be a long night, especially as the first bodyguard swung at me. I ducked him, hit him low, hit him high, went for his gun, but I held on to my lucky fork, shot him with his gun, and just kept on going. You're supposed to let go of that weapon you begin uh, an encounter with, but you know what? I just kept on going. And it was a good thing, too, because someone threw what looks to be a coiled snake my way, and I used that fork to stake it to a wall. Just nailed it there, right? Quite nicely. Then I shot him, low, of course, and as he's yelping at what's left of his manhood, the gun jams. So, as the snake is slowly dying, I count three more live heads, put out the, hmm, the fork. I can't believe I'm fighting for a fork. I, God, give me a lamp, give me a knife, give me an axe, give me a chainsaw. All I have is this bloody fork. I wipe it off, cross my tux, wondering why I used up all my gadgets in act two of this particular case. And I go running forth. And then the third one comes at me, I, I get him right in the eye, and ooh, look, two guns, nice. I take his guns and start blazing away, and I take out the last two, and then uh, I get hit from behind. Down I fall, next to the guy I nailed with the fork. And with my dying breath, I take this imbalanced weapon with all of my might. I turn it, hurl it at my would-be, probably killer, and I miss. Crap. Mm. Not bad. It's a fork. You, you yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a fork. It is a fork. All right, I'll give that one a try. Robert sat twirling the fork on his plate. It was really unique. Not the fork, but what looked like spaghetti inside. I'd never been to a Halloween dinner before, but the spaghetti and sauce didn't seem quite right. I mean, the red, marinara, or blood, uh, I couldn't quite tell. It looked somewhat congealed and chunky. Um, and as I, I watched, there seemed to be strands of hair. Boiled, he says. Boiled hair makes the best. It slurps. Just right. 
Now, I wouldn't necessarily try this myself. I, I you know, didn't have much choice with a gun to my head, but after four days without food, something about it just looked appetizing. I pick up my fork and stare at my plate. The, the remains of something or someone just staring back at me. He caught the vibe. He really caught the vibe. All right, um, I'm sorry. Leo chooseth the winner. Very well, thank you, sir. All right. You did it. Good job. I pulled that out of my left nostril, man. And as I'm, you did a good one, by the way. That's fun. Thank you. I would say to you that um, had I had to do it all over again, because I etch a sketched you in a couple, if I were to etch a sketch myself and do it all over again, I would have been torn between either a mystical fork that allowed me to spot poisons, or I'm giving a set of gift forks to somebody and they're designed to basically inflict upon you the sin of gluttony. Like you will eat and you can't stop eating. And the glyphs on the fork, you never see them, you just eat and eat and eat and eat mm. until you're dead. Like you eat everything in your house and you're just, they find you the next day just dead. And you never let go of that fork. Nice. That I think that probably would have been a little bit better. I mean, yours was good enough, but if I, mean, I had a minute, yes. If I had ten seconds, such as life. But still, yeah, it's out there. I had a little bit more time, and I was I started thinking, what if it was like a bone fork, you know, part of the sternum of something, or you know, that had been made into a fork. That or, would be kind of cool. Like you, you have know, the, you have the powers, the mindset of some somebody you're getting, or maybe it's a complex ritual. Like you kill somebody, you bone it up into a fork, and you eat the person's remains, and you become that person. When it's over, you become like you become Bill Gates. <laughs> and then you, you know, you. I don't want to become Bill Gates. I want to have Bill Gates stuff. So maybe that's that's. Pay attention, people. This is maybe how Halloween movies are created. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Uh, <laughs> these these are all viable. But um, uh, I think mine had kind of a Silence of the Lambs feel. But you had it. You had the vibe. I, I must confess, you had the vibe. And yours had that action going. I mean, you just started with action. That is my first prompt. Jason Bourne style fight, I must say, bravo to me. All right, so I'm curious. Horror flicks, huh? are they all appropriate to Halloween? Well, no, no, but the thing you gotta understand about Halloween is basically the Mardi Gras, it's not. I mean, some of these films belong in that season, some of them don't, but you can basically crack open anything you want, sit down and enjoy your Halloween. Yes, you can watch Peanuts. Yes, you can watch Popcorn. Yes, you can watch Creep Show. It's all there. It's what do you feel like celebrating? Horror story. What every everything except for um, sound of music. No sound of music on Halloween. <laughs> you hear me? None. If Not you do, all. you need to see a therapist. Thank you. Two. No, two therapists and a service animal. Now, what I would say to you is, Halloween falls within maybe like a triangle. All right. At the very top, you have scary. To the very left, you have funny stuff. And to the right, yeah. you have something very violent and actiony. I mean, you can actually kick back and maybe watch Lethal Weapon on a Halloween, and yeah, you may draw some weird stares, but it's not the sound of music. Anything yeah. within that general sphere, fine. It'd be overwhelming, oh, like Alien, now or, okay. or Terminator. I, I'm going to throw Halloween another Halloween. one in with the sound of the mu music. Don't watch Pippi Longstockings on Halloween. Okay, that's I, I, I can't see that. <laughs> we will force choke you through the image. We will find a way. <laughs> We will take Metachlorian shots and find you. I, I was over at a, a friend's house, and um, I was young, probably eight or nine, and his parents had rented two movies for us. It was Halloween. We had so they'd rented Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Pet Cemetery, and I'd never seen any horror movies like that. I was not familiar with Stephen King or anything, and. Watching those maybe jump out of my skin multiple times, uh, and then I didn't walk home, but uh, I was certainly shivering under the covers that whole night in the sleeping bag. Only two movies had an impact on me, both times I was a kid. 
First one was, for some odd reason, in my school, they showed the black and white very first Night of the Living Dead. Oh, and I had to walk out halfway through. <laughs> and when I finally saw it in my 30s, I'm like, you know what? This is, this this almost looks like a uh, a really dark Twilight Zone episode. And the brother, oh, I don't want to spoil it. Oh, the brother. Oof. And then Aliens 2. I went into a crowded theater on a summer, uh, like opening weeks when it came out, right? And I got to say, when I walked out of there, I, I was happy to see daylight. I was scared to death. Mm. Might have been like early teens, but jeez. So Aliens in, was one of those mm. in my teens, predator too. I uh, my it was my one of my birthdays. We rented all the uh, Nightmare on Elm Streets that were out at the time, and we watched oh, all of those at my house. I have a friend who we I lived in the mountains, so we our houses were kind of far apart, about half a mile apart, and he was over, and we were watching it. And there was a part where Freddy is walking by and he's got his claws and he's raking them against chains as he's walking through one of the dreams. Uh -huh. And so movies are over and we're going to go stay the night at my friend's house about a half a mile away. When we go outside, my dog is out on, on his leash on a chain. And we used to have this little metal railing that goes along the deck so that the chain wouldn't get caught in the deck rings. And so we start walking and my dog comes running out to say hi to us. And that chain scrapes across that metal Ooh. thing, and we didn't stop running until we were in that dude's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for joining us for this Halloween special, but I think we need to close up shop today. Well, I'm Marcus V. Calibert, sci-fi author, I villain. Feel free to check it out on Amazon and Kindle. It'll definitely disturb you. Weston Kincaid, fantasy horror and mystery author. And uh, let's see. Oh, Leo, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for filling in, Leo. Vet Leo. bells are going to be a beast this year. Anyway, to our esteemed colleagues at Story Medics, thank you for being you and for staying out of the sanitarium. And for those of you who are spending time with us, thank you for joining us. Oh!